Good morning to each one of you. It is uh, good to be here and uh, worshiping with God's people. It's good to see the house well filled today. Um, it's good to be praising the great I am. And uh, that's what I want to think about here uh, this morning. The great I am. And I uh, gave it a title, I am all you need. And so I want to look at the I am's in, in chapter John this morning. Um, <clears throat> as we, you know, as I've been studying for this message, I have found, and we will find here this morning, that Jesus Christ is all we need. He is um, everything we need to have our needs supplied. And that should be a comfort to us this morning through these uncertain times that we live in. Um, I want to portray that to you all this morning, that to help you to realize that that's, it's through Jesus Christ and he is all we need. Um, it says in Isaiah chapter 46, it says, God says, I am God. And uh, it was a time in Isaiah there where they were um, uh, in idol worship. There was idols that they were worshiping and God was saying, you know, these, these idols are doing nothing for you. They're, they, look what I've done in the past for you. And these idols do absolutely nothing. And he gives them a choice. And he says, I am God. There's a choice. You can follow me or you can follow these idols, and which will do nothing for you. And um, as I was thinking a little bit about, as I was preparing for this message, I was thinking a little bit about the sovereignty of God. Um, you know, God knows everything. He knows the past. Um, he knows that everything that happened in the lives of billions of people that have lived on this earth. And he knows the present. He knows what's going on in each one of our lives this morning. And he knows the future. He knows what happens in the future. And as I was thinking, you know, uh, what does it mean for us to comprehend that? The fullness of God. Um, sometimes it does us good to sit back. And as the, as the verse says in, in Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. And sometimes it does us good just to, to sit back and realize that um, just to be still and know that um, God is God. And we can do that. We can know God um, this morning. And so, you know, the devil, he wants to distract us. He wants to create distractions in our lives, um, keep us busy, keep us going at a fast pace. Uh, that's what he wants. He wants to distract us and to keep us from doing that, from getting into our prayer closet and, and praying and, and getting to know God uh, just for example, as I was studying for this here a, a few weeks ago, I had shared this message in Shenandoah the, um, about a month ago. And as I was sitting down there studying, I started getting phone calls. And I started getting, it, it was, it was a, a call, caller from California. And every time he called, the, per, the scammer, I called a scammer, every time they called, it would be a different number every time. So I started getting these calls and I would answer it and then put it back, and then, and then I didn't answer it, and then it would go to my voicemail, and it just kept calling and calling, and I was, I don't know what's going on. Earlier in the day, I had that a little bit. It was the same number was calling, and it just, one after the other, kept calling. I guess I, I should have turned my phone off, probably, but it's, it, it, it was, it was, to think about that, it was almost like the devil was creating a distraction. I mean, it's right that time I was trying to figure this out, what God wanted to leave me, and this, this came up. So, you know, the devil is at work. He really is to um, try to bring distractions into our lives. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> to fully understand the sovereignty of God, the fullness, the, complete, uh, the completeness of God, um, we need to understand that God supplies us with everything we need to serve him. He supplies us with everything. Um, and maybe you're here this morning, I don't know, maybe you're scared about something, or maybe you're scared, worried about the future. Um, I don't know, whatever it is, if you're worried about or scared, um, then this message is for you. And I want to look at the I am's of God in, in John. We're going to jump around a little bit here. I should probably have a series of messages on each one of these, but we're just going to kind of briefly go through it this morning. And so you can turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 6. And thank you, Damien, for that song. I am the bread. Break thou the bread of life. That, this verse was on, that, on the title, title of the heading of that song. John chapter 6, verse 35. 
says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I would no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So I have some bread here with me this morning. It is what you would call sourdough bread. Sourdough bread. Uh, it, uh, it must, the name almost gives you goosebumps if you think about it too long. Sourdough bread. But this is, it's, I guess it'll, it'll uh, be in place of the good homemade bread um, for this morning that sometimes the ladies like to make. Um, but it is a one pound, uh, one pound loaf of bread. Uh, most loaves of bread are more than one pound, and so I wanted to make it a one pound loaf of bread, or get a one pound loaf of bread uh, because of some of the um, facts here on bread. You want to know how much bread can be produced. So bread, we all know bread comes from wheat. So wheat is planted in the field, and it is combined when, when it's ready at the hard harvest time. It's combined, and then it goes through, I don't know what process it is to uh, make it into this loaf, and is, eventually it is baked into um, this bread, what we have here this morning. And so <clears throat> one bushel of wheat will produce 73 one-pound loaves of bread. So you get a bushel of wheat. I don't know how big a bushel is, a um, bushel of wheat. I wish I could have brought one with here. But 73 of these, you can, we can stack all over this, this pulp at 73 loaves, and that's what one bushel will produce. And so it takes a combined nine seconds to harvest enough wheat to make 70 loaves of bread. So nine seconds of a combine. I'm not sure that depends on how big of a head and everything it is, but <clears throat> uh, in general. And just a, a note here, last year, Kansas farmers, um, most of us know what it's like to drive through the state of Kansas. There is plenty of wheat fields, and I call it the never-ending state. You drive and drive and drive, and it's most a lot of, a lot of wheat, um, flat wheat fields. And Kansas produces about 18% of the bread in the United States, so it's a very large uh, producer of wheat. Um, so last year, Kansas produced enough of wheat to make 23.5 billion loaves of bread. So 23.5 billion loaves of bread and that is enough to provide every person on earth with three loaves of bread, every person. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> we see bread. We know bread sustains life. Bread is good. I don't know about sourdough bread, but bread in general, good bread, homemade bread is good. And we see how much bread, um, for, how much bread can be produced, how much bread comes from these little grains of wheat that a wheat head, I don't know how many grains of wheat are on a wheat head, but many, many little grains of wheat combined together, you can make a loaf of bread. And <clears throat> Jesus, what's he saying here in, this, in John 6? He says, But he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and believeth on me shall never thirst. Um, you know, that is nourishment that comes from a Savior who understands um, our hunger pangs. He understands our desire to be filled. He understands that we need filling. We need to be filled um, uh, physically, with physical food, bread, and also spiritually as well. And this was taken just after Jesus had fed the 5,000. And the people here could see what, um, he could see that you can be filled physically. He could see that physical needs were filled through the feeding of the 5,000 in a miraculous way. <clears throat> and now he uses this in a spiritual sense, bread, the living bread. <clears throat> and it's something that the people could relate to. The people sitting there um, 
that, uh, that were listening to him, and also the people throughout the world, down through eternity. People could relate to that. And he says, I have nourishment that you need. I have the nourishment that you need to sustain life. It is life-sustaining. <clears throat> you know, the, what's fulfilling is, is this right here, God's word. That, it's what we need. It's the bread of life, and not, not, the, not this. This doesn't fulfill, but God's word does. And um, something, you know, it can, can be a hindrance, as, as uh, I can maybe say that from experience. It can be a hindrance from God's word. And we need to read God's word and, and read it and understand it and live it. Live, live, live out God's word. <clears throat> and in verse 38 it says, He came to do God's will, not the will of him Verse 38, for I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. So Jesus Christ came to do God's will. And um, looking over in verse 14 and 15, this is after the 5,000, it says, Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. So... It says there that, that, you know, Jesus Christ, he could have made a name for himself while he was living on this earth. But he came to do God's will. He came for a different plan. He had a different plan in mind than what most of the people did um, in, in the day. And he came to do the will of God. And that was to bridge the gap between um, heaven and hell. To bridge the gap between this world system here and life in eternity. <clears throat> so he came to believe he came so that all men would believe, as it says in verse 40 there, that all men would believe. <clears throat> and secondly, <clears throat> the I am, I am the light of the world. I got a flashlight here this morning. <clears throat> you know, a flashlight um, sheds light in, in a dark room. So if we go into, a, if we would turn out all the lights in this room uh, here, it wouldn't be pitch dark, but it would be dark. If I turn this flashlight on, it would, it, it would penetrate the darkness. It would light up the dark room. And that's what Jesus' light does. He brings light to darkness. Darkness has to flee when the light is, sh is shown in the darkness. And <clears throat> without Jesus, in this world, there is darkness. There, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a dark world without Jesus Christ. <clears throat> light is required for everything we do. We need light. Um, we cannot live in darkness. And so this morning I would like to think a little bit of us like the moon and God like the sun. So God, um, the sun shines on the moon, the moon reflects that light back to earth. And so in, in a spiritual sense, thinking of God's light shining into us and then we're reflecting that light back to the earth. It's a beautiful picture of, of shining the light, shining forth the light in this dark world. <clears throat> Matthew 5 says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. And John 9, verse 5, Jesus says, um, I'm just going to quickly read, read a verse there in John 9, verse 5, that says, As long as I am in the world... I am the light of the world. So Jesus says, as long as he is in the world, he is the light of the world. So when Jesus left this world, he, when he was in the world, he was a light. He, he, he uh, was the light of the world. He showed the way to God. He was that light. But then when he left this world, whose responsibility is it to be the light? Because he says, as long as he is in the world, he is the light of the world. And so that puts a responsibility on us today, I believe, as Christians, to be that light to shine forth um, in, in the dark world, to, to uh, have Jesus Christ living within us so we can reflect that to the world around us. <clears throat> the, uh, thirdly, so I'm the bread of life, I'm the light of the world, and I am the door of the sheep. So this might be a little uh, kind of a poor excuse for a sheep pen, 
but this is considered a sheep pen. And um, in the Western world, in, in uh, our day, most sheep pens have a gate or a, a uh, door or something to close the pen so the sheep do not get out. I mean, we would have probably some pretty upset neighbors if we left our animals run all over creation. So we have doors, we have gates, we're, we're used to that. Um, and, uh, but but in, the, in the Middle East, a lot of times a sheep pen would be a stone wall that would, be, that would surround the, 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 the corral for the sheep to go in. It would be a stone wall, and many times it did not have a door on the front. There would be, not be a door or a gate or anything um, on the front. So the sheep could freely go in and out, in and out inside. And, um, and then in the evening, the shepherd would, 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 uh, would uh, get the sheep together and put them inside the pen. And the shepherd would, would stand in front of the door. <clears throat> he would stand in front of the door, and it, I, I even read some, sometimes the shepherd would, actually, would sleep, lay across the door and sleep there at the door, protecting the sheep, keeping the sheep in, and keeping the wolves and the varmints and animals out of the sheep pen. And <clears throat> so this morning, we get a picture of Jesus <clears throat> standing at the door standing at the door to the sheep pen. And um, if, if I can think about what um, we, thinking of the sheep pen as our heart, and Jesus standing at our heart's door, what is it that we will try, we will allow into our hearts? Will we allow Jesus to see and to filter what is coming into our hearts? <clears throat> So if we're a Christian here this morning, are we letting Jesus Christ stand at the door and examine what is coming in through into our hearts? And these illustrations that Jesus um, used that people could relate to, Jesus, people could relate to these, these illustrations. I am the bread, I am the door, and I am the good shepherd, which we'll get into that next. Because um, this was an area, you know, sheep and, and shepherds, people could relate to um, those illustrations. But Jesus says, I am the door, and it is only through me, it is only through me that you can be saved. <clears throat> what is five things that a door provides? So, five things that a door provides. A door provides access. So... We have access to God. We have access to God through Jesus Christ. The door provides access. You can go in into a dwelling through the door. Secondly, a door provides protection. So a door keeps um, the thieves and the robbers and everything else out. It provides protection. And so I was thinking about that. I um, wasn't sure if I was going to share this story, but I guess I will. I remember a few... Many years ago, there was a, a time that uh, I was with some, we were with some friends out at what I would call Beulah Land. And I'm sure many of you know, I probably bring this up, Beulah Land, up different times because I love Beulah Land. It's a place where you can go out away from the uh, cares of this world and you can, you can go out at night and you can watch the stars. It's, there's not many lights, not many uh, dwellings close by and so you can go out and get away from everything and it's a beautiful place I just love to go there <clears throat> and anyway we were out there one evening and we were listening to some coyotes so the coyotes were howling all around us and it was uh, I love I love listening to coyotes um, it was just a good time we were and we were kind of thinking it's it was it was pitch dark at the time it was kind of get the, this eerie feeling after a while with these coyotes howling around you. And, okay, well, we should probably soon get in the door, into the truck, and we're going to head, head home. And just, just right at that, about that time, there was a, an owl or something right above us that let loose. It was a screech owl or something. I don't know what it was. But there was a scrambling to get to that door like you've never seen before. We hustled to get into that door because everything... 
the coyotes are howling, the screech owl's going, and we got to get to the, because the door provided protection from all the critters and whatever out, was out there. And I'm not scared of the dark, but it was, <laughs> it was, it was a little, uh, it was one of them things where let's get inside, let's find protection. So anyway, that's what a door does. It provides protection. Thirdly, a door is a separator. It keeps us separate from the world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. <clears throat> Separates us, in a sense, from the, uh, the wolves and the, the thieves and, and the robbers when we put our trust in Jesus Christ. Fourthly, an open door is a sign of fellowship. An open door is a sign of invitation. So this morning, the doors are, are not locked. They're open, open for, for people to come in to worship. And that's a sign of invitation. A closed door is, is not a sign of invitation. When you have a closed door into a house, you're not welcome. Usually when a door is closed, you're not welcome unless the person inside opens the door for you. And so, Jesus Christ extends that invitation. He is an open door. Come on in, and he will give you rest. Fifthly, a means to go in and out. The door is a means to go in and out. And so, everything that we allow into our lives needs to go through the door. And I think um, today... Uh, we need to be on our guard. What comes into our lives in this day of media and technologies, I was thinking about that, that does not necessarily have to come in through the door. It can come into our homes through the World Wide Web, and it doesn't necessarily have to come in through the front door. And so that is something that we need to be on guard. And I think every father here this morning needs to be able to filter, be able to take the responsibility to filter what comes into your homes. Fourthly, I am the good shepherd. And John 10, let's read that. John 10, 11 to 14. John 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming. And leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. So Jesus, correct me if I'm wrong, but Jesus never called himself a preacher. If I'm, somebody can uh, maybe, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but Jesus never called himself a preacher, but he called himself a shepherd. So he called himself a shepherd. He is the good shepherd. And we need a shepherd. We as God's people, we need a shepherd. Um, and Jesus, you know, like a good shepherd, he will put himself into harm's way to go out to find that lost sheep that is lost. And <clears throat> sheep are so, are so helpless. Um, if you think of a sheep, a sheep cannot protect themselves from predators. Most, most animals in the world today have a form of defense, whether it's sharp teeth or claws or, or uh, they're able to run fast or they can blend into their surroundings or whatever it may be. Most animals have a form of defense in some way or another. Um, but sheep pretty much stick out like a sore thumb. They're, they're simply helpless. They can't even find food and water in a wilderness context. Um, but a shepherd, a shepherd leads them beside the still waters, it says in Psalm 23. He leadeth me beside the still waters. <clears throat> he restoreth my soul. And so as we think about that, that on our own, we are helpless on our own. And, <clears throat> you know, have you ever in your life come to a place where you have no idea what to do? There is a decision to be made or there's something that, that uh, you, there's a, a question that is asked or whatever it is and you have no idea which direction to take or which turn to go you have no idea and you know I have I have found it that way at times we are 
you know, there's no, you wish you would have a map. You wish you would have like a GPS, a spiritual GPS that would say, take this turn, take that turn, go this way or that way. And, you know, sometimes we want to know what God's will is and we want to know where we're supposed to go or what direction to take. And, you know, God gives us everything we need to find out, find his will. He gives us his word. It's right here. It's, it's, it's laid out for us in a beautiful way. And um, I think to know the will of God, we need to remain close to the shepherd. That is, that is the way we can find God's will is to remain close to the shepherd. And um, that takes diligence. It does. It takes um, effort and diligence to study and to um, know the word of God. <clears throat> and so I found a, a, a story one time. I don't actually have the story with me, but I'd like to share it if I can remember all the details. It's about um, in, in the highlands of Scotland. I guess there's um, highlands is what it is. It's areas where it's higher elevations, and there's a lot of shepherds and sheep in that area, and the sheep would graze uh, big areas, um, and, and there was there was cliffs, like different uh, places where the sheep could go down, down a couple, a couple, a uh, few rocks to get down to a little grassy area, maybe like 10 or, 10 or 12 foot grassy area. And the sheep sometimes would go down to these areas and then the sheep could not get back up again. So they would go down in and get back up or, and they couldn't get back up. And so they would, they would graze down there and the shepherd would come along and see that these sheep are down over, over this, this cliff. And so, the shepherd does not go right down after the sheep right away. The shepherd lets the sheep go and lets them um, get weak. In fact, it lets the days go past and, the, and the, maybe even the weeks. I don't know how long, but he lets them go until they can't stand up on their own anymore. So they're actually that weak that they can't even help themselves anymore. And then the shepherd goes down, ties a rope fast to them, and pulls them back out of, of the, their death, really. And why does the shepherd not go down right away when the sheep are still good and healthy? Why does he have to wait until the sheep are almost dead, till they're almost beyond help to, to go down and get them? Because sheep are that dumb that they would just jump out over the edge. If he ran, went down after them, they would just jump out over the edge. And so, you know, as we think about that, um, isn't, it, isn't it that way with men at times? with us today. Some, sometimes I think God waits until we hit rock bottom, until we realize that the distance is not worth the pain. The distance is not worth the pain. And then he pulls us back up. And that is a, a picture of Jesus Christ as the good shepherd. He pulls us back up to safety um, when we're in that situation. <clears throat> and so... In, in these verses here, he says many times, different, various times in these verses, I lay down my life for the sheep. I lay down my life for the sheep. And, you know, the, the writer here didn't have a highlighter, probably not. So in order to get a point across, he would mention it over and over again. It's mentioned over and over. I lay down my life for the sheep. And that's what Jesus Christ did. He's the good shepherd. And he gave his life so that we can live, so that we might have life. And we can have it more abundantly. Praise God for that this morning. Life abundantly. So the next two, uh, the I am's, is the I, I am the resurrection and the life. And that is in John 11, verse 25. <clears throat> John eleven twenty five. 25. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And um, I'm gonna just gonna, gonna combine these two together. Uh, the next one is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In John chapter 14, verse six. And we, were, we heard about this on Wednesday night. Ray talked about this on Wednesday night. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So I don't have to dwell a lot of time on, on this one here this morning, but I'm gonna read, read this verse six. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so Jesus here this morning, he provides nourishment. For, he provides the bread for nourishment. He provides light 
for direction, to see, to, get, to see our path. He provides protection through the door. He provides guidance as, as the shepherd. And now he provides salvation. <clears throat> what more could we ask for? What more could we want? Jesus has everything we need. And, and I think if, if, if Jesus, if we feel somehow that Jesus is not supplying our every need, I think the ball is in our court. It's up to us to um, step out in faith and, and ask him and allow him to use us, to work through us. <clears throat> and I think we need more of that than ever, than ever before today. We need more of that than ever before um, <clears throat> And so Jesus is the way. Any other way leads to um, death. It's a dead end. It's a dead end. Any other way is a dead end. He is the way. He is the truth. All else is a lie. Any other religion or, or way outside of Jesus Christ is a lie. He is the way, the truth, and the life. All other roads lead to death. <clears throat> I think John 14, verse 6 here should be a go-to verse for us. If we're, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes we have go-to things in life. And it should be a go-to verse when we're um, witnessing to someone that Jesus Christ is the only way. The way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way to God. And so Jesus isn't just the source of these things. He isn't just a travel agent telling us the way to go. He is the way. He is the way. And, and th that way is not the popular way, as we know in our world today. The way of Jesus is not the popular way. Jesus said that many people will go the broad way, and few there be that find the narrow way. Um, why? Because the way of Jesus is the way of the cross. It, it's not a popular way, but it is the only way. And... <clears throat> as we think about what Jesus said to the, uh, the Jewish leaders of the day, he was going around saying that he is the way, the truth, and the life. It, it, it was probably one of the most offensive things that Jesus said, to, especially to the, the Jewish leaders, like the, the Pharisees and the leaders of the day. Here he's going around and saying that he is the only way. And you know, people, he wanted people to follow him. And, <clears throat> and yet, <clears throat> Thinking of the, the Jewish leaders, they, you know, if you live by the Jewish law, you sacrificed at, at the altar, you live strictly by the law, and now they hear this, that Jesus is saying that he is, is the way, you know, they, they couldn't stand him. They, they, uh, they eventually tried to, they tried to kill him different times, and eventually he was put to death. And, but I think they, I, I know they realized that after he died, that they said, truly this was the Son of God, and he was the way. And so, in your life today, is he the way that you are, are you following Jesus Christ? Is he vibrant in your life? Is it an abundant life through Jesus Christ? Are you feeding on the bread, the bread of life? If you're not, please get on the right way, because it is the only way. The last one I have here this morning is, I am the true vine, in John 15. Let's read over that, John 15, verses 1 through 5. I am the true vine. 15. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. So, here again, Jesus um, provides all these things. He provides everything we need, but we must stay connected. As it says here, uh, stay connected as the vine, the branch is connected to the tree. And it is the only way we can survive. As a branch needs to be connected to the tree in order to survive, it's the same way. We need to be connected to God in order to survive. And um, at home, I have some, uh, what you would call, elanthus, uh, elanthus trees. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but they're, they're an invasive species, and they're an ugly tree. They're hard to get rid of. 
They're just a pain, to put it bluntly. And I uh, was, the, the spider lantern flies like, the, like these trees. If you'll notice, they're, they're, they cover, they're covered in these spotted lantern fry, flies. And so I was trying to get rid of these trees, and so I thought I was doing myself a favor, and I went along and cut these trees over. I had a, a bunch on a bank, and I was just went along and just, just cut them down. And I found out later that that wasn't the right thing to do to get rid of these trees, because when you cut them over, you cut them over at the, at the base, nine or 10 shoots will come right out. As soon as you cut it over, they spread like wildfire, and they're, and they're coming right back. And so, I found out later the way to get rid of these trees is to take a hatchet and go just make three notches around this tree, just notch a good notch into the tree and put Roundup, spray Roundup into this, into the, uh, the, tr into the cut and it sucks it down in and it sucks the, the poison down into the roots and kills the tree. That's the only right way to get rid of these trees. And <clears throat> I, here I thought I'm doing myself a favor, I'm just cutting them all off and and I uh, thought, but, but that's not, that doesn't work for that. And, you know, it is the same way, I believe, with, with us. You know, we can't feed on the poison. We can't feed on poison in this world. Um, it's soon going to destroy us. It's soon going to get down into, into our lives, into the roots, and, and will kill us. We need to stay plugged in to God's word and, and feed on the bread of life, feed on the good things that um, will stabilize us. And so, <clears throat> why do I bring this message this morning on the IMs? I know we briefly kind of went through them, um, but, you know, maybe here, maybe there's someone here that's struggling with trust, just trusting in God. Maybe you're struggling with uh, fear of the future, um, as we live in uncertain times today. And, you know, I just would like to say that God sees the whole picture. Um, he created us with needs. He created us. Um, he knows we need help. And so he knows we need guidance. We need the light to go. We need nourishment. He knows we um, need to be shown the way. And we need all these things. He knows that. He created us for, with needs. And... <clears throat> He provides us with everything we need this morning, and I'm so thankful for that. What we need to do is, is ask him. We need to ask him, and he will fill us. So do you think what's going on today is out of God's hand? What, what's happening in our world today is, is out of God's hand. And somehow he's having a hard time pulling things together. It's, that's, not, that's not the truth. Um, there's nothing that happens in this universe that is outside of of God's um, influence and authority. And I'm so thankful that this morning we can put our trust in God, we can depend on him, rely on him, and our needs are partaken. Our needs will be supplied. And sometimes it's, it's hard to do that. It's hard to trust to uh, the trust of future. But thank, thank God that he is um, there. And so choose life this morning. Choose life. Stay close to the shepherd, and he will provide. And so my prayer is that each one of us here would be able to, to do that, just to be faithful, to continue trusting in him, uh, because he is the sustainer, the protector, and all these things um, that we uh, mentioned here this morning. And uh, allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life, to... Um, bring encouragement and uh, allow him to work and he will be faithful. So I'm going to close here. I'll have a prayer and then after the prayer you can uh, have a song, verse a song, and then consider yourself dismissed. So why don't we all stand for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you again this morning. Lord, we can't thank you enough for the provisions that you give us. You're the bread of life. You're the light of the world. Lord, uh, the shepherd, the good shepherd. So many things that, that we have to be thankful for and that you created us and you created us with a purpose. Uh, Lord, help us to have a vision. Help us to um, 
to be faithful to you, to be faithful to, to your word, to what you have um, so clearly laid out to us, the, the, the map that we have um, to follow. We thank you for that, Lord. Pray for each one here this morning. Lord, there's so many uh, needs in the world today. I'm sure there's needs here this morning. Lord, there's needs in my own life. I pray, God, that you would meet each one of our needs, that you would um, come down and just speak to us, Lord. Just help us to be faithful, to trust in you, and to, to listen to what you have for us, Lord. Lord, just be with us um, the, rest of this, the rest of this day. Help us to have a good day. Lord, I pray for the service tonight. As he uh, comes to speak to us tonight, Lord, I pray that um, you would uh, lead, in, lead God and direct. Just be with us this week. In your name I pray. Amen.